In this problem, we have an example with rational exponents. So we're going to handle things the same way. We're going to think about what our domain is. And our domain of this rational problem or rational exponent problem is going to be negative infinity to positive infinity because we have a cubed root. So inside the cubed root, you can have positive or negative numbers. I always like to try and find the intercepts first. So we're going to put a 0 in for y. And we're going to solve. When we put a 0 in for y, we're going to need to factor out the x to the 4 thirds, leaving us 2x to the 1 third minus 5. x to the 4 thirds equals 0 gives us x equals 0. And 2x to the 1 third equals 5 gives us x is equal to 125 over 8. So our intercepts are 0, 0. And those were x-intercepts. So 125 over 8 comma 0. I'm going to just make this a little bit smaller. I'm going to put it off to the side. Then we need to find our y-intercept, which is when we put a 0 in for x. So 2 times 0 minus 5 times 0. That is 0, no surprise, because this is a y-intercept and an x-intercept. There's no asymptotes because we have a continuous function. Therefore, we're ready to start on our first derivative. So our first derivative is going to equal 5 thirds times 2x to the 2 thirds minus 4 thirds times 5x to the 1 third. That gives us 10 thirds times x to the 2 thirds minus 20 thirds times x to the 1 third. And that's our first derivative. We need to set that equal to 0 and solve. So we'll be factoring. We can take a 10 thirds out, and we can take an x to the 1 third out. It's going to leave us x to the 1 third minus 2 inside our parentheses. This produces x equals 0, and this factor produces x equals 8. So we'll make our number line. We've got 0, we've got 8. And this would be a good place for you to pause and see if you can test your intervals properly to see whether or not they're increasing or decreasing. I'm going to provide the answers here. So I found that we were increasing in this interval. We're decreasing in this second interval and then we're increasing again in the third interval. Now it's time to find that second derivative. Our second derivative is going to take the first derivative and take its derivative. So we're going to have 2 thirds times 10 thirds x to the negative 1 third minus 1 third times 20 thirds x to the negative 2 thirds. And that simplifies to be 20 ninths x to the negative 1 third minus 20 ninths again. That's going to be convenient x to the negative 2 thirds. And I can factor set it equal to 0 and factor 
20 ninths x to the negative 2 thirds is going to leave us x to the 1 third minus 1. It's a good number. So once again, when we solve using our zero product property, this provides us x equals 0, and this is x equals 1. So on the number line, we've got 0 and 1. And this would be a good place for you to test into your second derivative and see if you can find the concavity. Okay, I found this first interval to be negative. That means it's concave down. The second interval I found negative. That's concave down. And then the third interval I found positive, so that's concave up. So here we have a potential maximum using our first derivative and a minimum. Over here we have a point of inflection when x equals 1. So now we just need to find the corresponding values for those ordered pairs. And we do that in the original function, f of x equals 2x to the 5 thirds minus 5x to the 4 thirds. So when we put a 0 in, we get a 0 out. When we put an 8 in, 2 times 8 to the 5 thirds, the cube root of 8 is 2. 2 to the 5th power is 32, so this is going to be 64. Whoops. Minus and then again, 5 times 8 to the 4 thirds. The cube root of 8 is 2. 2 to the 4th power is 16. 16 times 5, I believe, is 80 today. And that gives us a negative 16. Our point of inflection, we're going to need to find f of 1. So that's going to be 2 times 1 to the 5 thirds minus 5 times 1 to the 4 thirds which would be negative 3. So now we're ready to graph. I think the hardest part for me in these graphs is trying to figure out the scale. I feel like I'm, I remember, not specifically, but I do remember the feeling when I was in math class when I was younger, maybe even elementary school, when we learned how to just start looking at graphs. And I, the, the scaling sometimes was overwhelming when I had to come up with it on my own. So what I do here is I start looking at the values that are important. So the values that are important are those intercepts. So I'm going to start there. 0, 0 is my y-intercept and x-intercept, and then I have an x-intercept at 125 over 8, which is going to be about between 15 and 16. So obviously, going up by 2s, I'd be going way far to the right. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up by 5s, 5, 10, 15, 20. So between 15 and 16 would be my x-intercept right there. So somewhere right around there. And then I really like that, but I, I think I just need a little bit more room. So let's see if I can. Oh, I can. There we go. I'll just move the whole thing up. And then I can. I can extend this gray line. There. There. It almost looks like I did it from the beginning that way. Negative 5, negative 10, negative 15. And the reason I had to do this was because we've got this minimum at 8, negative 16. So it's going to be right about there. We've got a maximum right here. So here's our, a max. Here's a min. Looks like they're going to be relative max and mins. 
so we're going to confirm that once we draw this. And then I've got some concavity happening. Um, so what's happening with our concavity? Our concavity, we're concave down from negative infinity to zero. So that means something like this is happening, concave down. And we have this multiplicity. We have a multiplicity here when we found that zero. And it's all right here in this fourth power. So the cubed root right, of x to the fourth. So if this was any other number other than zero, I can take a positive number times itself four times and it would be positive. I could take a nev negative number times itself four times and it would be positive. So you might have to do something like a plus or minus here. However, because you're dealing with zero, it ends up translating to a multiplicity. So we've got a multiplicity here because it's a max, so it's gonna turn. And then at the min, it's gonna turn. But look, for it to turn, I have to change the concavity. So where's that concavity happening? That concavity is happening at one, negative three. which allows me to kind of go back in my drawing and say, okay, so we're concave down, and then at this point, we're going concave up. And then we're concave up until we get to um, infinity. So this is just going to continue to go through there like that. And there's our, there's our graph. It's kind of cool not having to use a table and plug values in. Also using calculus puts us at a higher level, but I think that's the most challenging problem, and I think what makes it challenging is those rational exponents. So hopefully you found this helpful. You can work through it. If you have questions, most certainly ask.